There's some pretty concerning news about surveillance in India, and it's time we talk about it. On 5th April, The Hindu reported that an Indian defense agency has been buying equipment from Cognite Software Limited, an Israeli spyware company. Some even think it's an alternative for Pegasus. Plus, Cognite is dealing with a class action lawsuit in the US right now. This is one of the many instances of targeted surveillance in India, which has seen a disturbing increase in recent years. With the rise of digital technologies, the government and other entities have allegedly increasingly used surveillance to monitor citizens' activities. But how does surveillance even work in India? What are the existing laws that regulate it? And what is the surveillance architecture here? Let's dig into these questions with our policy researcher, Anushka Jain. Hi, I am Anushka Jain, Policy Counsel at Internet Freedom Foundation. To start off, currently the Telegraph Act and the Information Technology Act are two laws in India that regulate surveillance, but they have several pitfalls. The Telegraph Act lets the government tap phone calls, but it doesn't cover modern forms of communication like email or messaging. On the other hand, the IT Act allows the government to intercept and monitor digital communication. However, hacking into computer resources, including mobile phones and apps, is a crime under the IT Act. Both these laws lack transparency and accountability. These laws, along with the rules made under them, form the legal framework which is a key component of the surveillance architecture in India. Basically, the complex systems of laws, policies and tech that let government entities and other entities keep an eye on what citizens are up to. But the use of spyware and other surveillance tech in India is happening outside of this surveillance architecture. There have been a bunch of cases of targeted surveillance in India over the past few years. You might remember the Pegasus revelations in 2021. It turned out that this spyware, developed by the Israeli company NSO Group, was used to target 37 phones, of which 10 belonged to Indians. Amnesty International Security Lab even confirmed that phones of journalists from big-name news outlets were targeted. Back in 2019, there were claims that Pegasus was used to hack into the devices of journalists, lawyers and Dalit activists linked to the Bhima Koregaon case. Speaking of the Bhima Koregaon case, Netwire was a spyware discovered in 2021 that targeted activists and academics by planting evidence on their devices, leading to arrests on charges of inciting violence. This raised serious concerns about the use of surveillance technologies and its chilling effect on free speech and dissent. Two cybersecurity firms, Arsenal and Sentinel One, published reports on spyware use in the Bhima Koregaon case. Arsenal's report showed that malware was used to spy on and plant evidence on the computers of two accused activists. Sentinel One's 2022 report investigated the hacking campaign which targeted individuals of the Bhima Koregaon case and found links between the campaign and someone associated with the Pune police, raising worries about law enforcement agencies potentially abusing such surveillance tech. The weak surveillance architecture in India has also allowed private surveillance for higher entities to flourish in India. On December 16, 2021, Meta issued a press release taking action against the surveillance for hire industry based on a threat report. After a month's long investigation, seven entities, including Delhi based Beltrox Infotech Services, were identified as engaging in surveillance for hire activities and subsequently removed from Meta's platforms. Beltrox, active on Facebook from 2013 to 2019 and again in 2021, had around 400 linked accounts. Most were inactive for years. However, they were used for profiling targets, collecting information, establishing contact, and tricking users into clicking malicious links or files. Beltrox also operated fake accounts impersonating public figures like politicians, journalists, activists, etc. to solicit information likely for future phishing attacks. What's really unsettling is that there's no legal recourse for someone who's been subjected to surveillance. In July 2021, following the Pegasus revelations, a petition was again filed in the Supreme Court of India, seeking an independent investigation into the alleged use of Pegasus. In October 2021, the court established a committee of experts to investigate the matter. By August 2022, the committee submitted its report in a sealed envelope to the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of India read some parts of the report in open court, which revealed that malware was found in 5 of 29 phones, but the report couldn't confirm if it was Pegasus. The CGI also remarked that it appeared the Union government did not cooperate in the proceedings before the committee. Despite this shocking revelation, the report remains in, in the sealed envelope, in the custody of the Supreme Court's General Secretary, even when the CGI stated during the court proceedings that parts of the report will be public. The draft Indian Telecommunication Bill 2022 
contains provisions related to surveillance. However, it fails to modernize the existing provisions and seems to retain some of its colonial roots by centralizing power and granting sweeping authority to the government. Plus, it brings OTT platforms like Signal and WhatsApp under the purview of telecom licensing, which would subject them to the same surveillance provisions as traditional telecom services. This might just expand government's surveillance capabilities and its encroachment on user privacy. The draft Digital Personal Data Protection Bill 2022 was expected to institute much-awaited safeguards on the surveillance architecture, but it instead granted exemptions to the state, widening government surveillance powers. As spyware and surveillance technology continue to advance rapidly, our laws are struggling to keep up, making the situation even more alarming. The Internet Freedom Foundation is dedicated to defending our digital rights, but we need your help. Donate to us and contribute to the fight against invasive surveillance. Also join our Telegram community for some great tech policy discussions with fellow policy enthusiasts. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to IFF's YouTube channel to stay informed.